We recently saw Attorney General Patrick Morsey pin a letter to the NCAA regarding the Raekwon battle transfer waiver situation. Well, today we're going to bring on another guest who has a very, very firm opinion on this issue, who's also running for governor for the state of West Virginia. He just so happens to be the president of our wonderful sponsor, Dutch Miller Automotive. He's also a boxer and a bison farmer. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do that right after this word from that sponsor. This episode of Hoops from the Hills is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre-loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory today across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com or come in today to the home of friends and family pricing only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. What is up, college basketball fans and West Virginia Mountaineer fans? This is Coos. And my name is Mountaineer Paul. And we present to you another episode of Hoops. From the hills. What is up, guys? Coos and Paul are back again with another episode. And today we have got a very, very special guest we are proud to bring on. And we're going to do that right now. We present to you the president of Dutch Miller Automotive, the fighting governor, Mr. Chris Miller. Chris, how you doing? Guys, man, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Absolutely. Yep. Well, let's dig in, man. We we were talking a little bit off air, but let's just dive right into this. You you you're well versed on the Raekwon battle transfer situation at West Virginia, right? Yeah, I am, uh, man. And, and I want to get your opinion on the situation. And do you agree, disagree with the NCAA here? What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, let's be honest. The real problem is the NCAA. Um, they are a duplicitous talking to both sides of their mouth do whatever they want to to reinforce the system bureaucracy and they've ruined college athletics in my mind. I mean, you you start talking, you start talking about creating a system where only the people with haves compete and the people with the have nots never get a chance to. It's what the NCAA has done aside from the NIL and the open transfer portal stuff. Like we are living through a time where it's just going to be a creation of all these big sec schools. And that is the premier semi pro league. And then the rest of these smaller schools kind of fall in line underneath it. And it's like double a and triple a and single a baseball. I mean, it's a shame what they've done, but if you really look at the NCAA and what they've done with this Raekwon battle thing, um, they're cheating this kid. The rules were open and plain as day. And you were given the opportunity to transfer. That's what the rules said. And then after he did it, they changed the rules. And Mm -hmm. then they're trying to use that as justification on why they're not letting him come. And they're if the if you really dig into the technicalities of it, like it's literally listed in the uh, bylaws inside of these rules where like you have to consider stuff like student athlete health and mental health. And you've got to have, you know, the mindset of the athlete has to be taken care of. And it's supposed to be open and transparent. And that's not what they're doing. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just a sad position for this young man because he can play ball. WVU would love to have him. It's going to allow us to compete a little bit more. And, like, they're just going, oh, no, not this time, guys. We just don't feel that this is the right thing, even though the rules say that you can. And, man, that's just garbage. It's the NCAA picking winners and losers like they always do. Yeah. So obviously we know there's an appeal. We know that A.G. Morrissey has penned a letter uh, and there's supposedly more to come. That's why we asked you to come on, because we knew you would have some really good insight in the situation, opinions of your own. But do you think on appeal with the backing of just people in West Virginia, whoever that is, you, Mr. Morrissey, do you think there's a chance for this appeal to actually be won or is it just kind of smoke and mirrors? I mean, just shoot it straight. I, 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 I do think it's a chance. It's going to depend on the mood of the uh, NCAA. Honestly, there's legal backing for it because of the technicality of the rules and then changing the goalposts, removing the goalposts, basically. So there's a chance. But the re- I mean, if we really want to have a voice here, we should be writing massive amounts of letters and emails to the NCAA about how they're, um, you know, killing communities with what they've done with college basketball. And in particular, we should be allowed to have athletes that want to transfer. If that's what their rules say, transfer. They're not following their own rules, but this is something that um, 
inside of, so I was the, the chair of the athletics committee for Marsh University's Board of Governors for the past three years. I'm no longer on the Board of Governors. Um, I had to um, decline being appointed again because of all the crazy stuff that I'm doing politically and all this time, you know, commitment stuff. But, you know, it gives you an insight on how that world really works. And, mm. you know, the, the, the athletic community, the athletic departments around the country and inside of West Virginia kind of look at this as a, um, a little political in nature, because if um, these attorney generals around the country really cared about the quality and the health of the student athlete, they wouldn't be cherry picking an issue like this. I mean, the first thing we'd be looking at is that whole uh, Connor Stallion, Michigan cheating issue, which is real and plain as day that guy got behind the scenes on fields was taking videos and recording what was going on um and was able to steal and plays and then you guys know what it's like yeah we're all athletes we're former mm -hmm. athletes um you're playing a ball game and you won you run a post across the center and you catch the ball score eight or you know uh, uh pick up an extra eight yards get tackled move on you run the exact same play and the defense knows it you do it the exact same play, the exact same next time. You give away everything. They know it's coming. That that receiver or that slot back gets smacked before he even catches the ball and gets a concussion. And if we were really, really worried about the health of athletes, we'd make sure that cheating was punished. And we'd make sure that this stuff, stuff doesn't happen. And, you know, you start thinking about the safety of athletes. When a, when a team knows exactly the plays you're going to run, that's how people get hurt, man. That's how athletes yep. really get hurt. And that'd be the first thing that any like organization should be focusing on is to make sure that this thing gets through the process fast. And that's the other problem with the NCAA, they take forever. It's that big bureaucratic organization that's kind of like the good old boy system that they, they take care of the big guys. They don't take care of the little guys. They find little micro nuances to punish the everyday Joe and you know Alabama and Michigan to get away with cheating. This whole thing's gonna take forever and they're not gonna dig into it in time. And it's just going to be more of this stuff right here. And that'd be the first thing that, that any athletic department around the country would want brought to light and brought to the attention of everybody and have a ruling quickly because it's about taking care of athletes. But yeah. it's not what we're focusing on. I mean, even you get into minutia details and stuff, if you really did want to dive into taking care of what was happening with the NCAA, I mean, you got the NIT now can have two power five schools that are 500, you know, averages inside of it and at the expense of you know the ohio valley and the sun belt yeah. and other smaller conferences the champion there doesn't get in now anymore just little things like that that keep reinforcing the system of growth of the top echelon and the ruining of college athletics because part of the fun was everybody got a chance to compete you recruited the right players you had the right coach even if you were from wvu or even from you were from marsh university you had a heck of a team you could compete and that's what we saw Every now and then, WVU would have a team in the top 20 and a team in the top 10, really competing, great athletes. And every now and then, Marshall do that. And the NCAA, they're killing that, man. They're killing that with their rules and their approach and their focus. And they've just gotten so big that it's more about, man, it's more about broadcast television and moving towards like selling all this stuff to Amazon or Netflix to have all the broadcasting rights of big time college athletics. And you see, like it's happening in front of our eyes, guys. They're yeah. killing it. They're killing it. Yeah, the, I mean, in my opinion, the perfect example of that is you look at all this conference realignment with teams having to play teams across the country. And you know, we Coach Bob Huggins used to complain all the time about how he he said the NCAA will sit up there and talk about you know how they're all for the betterment of the student athlete. He said, is it really for the betterment of the student athlete for them to play a basketball game on a Monday night? at 9 p.m. Eastern time in Texas and then have to fly back to Morgantown and get back in Morgantown at 5 a.m. and have class at 8? Is that really for the betterment of the student athlete? No. You know, it's it's hypocritical, like you said. It's uh, – and nobody's exactly. doing, and, and nobody seems to be doing anything about it is the problem. It's, what I, it's one of the things I love about Bob, Bob Huggins, man. He cared about the athletes. He cares about West Virginia. He cares about WVU. His yeah. heart is there, man. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, yep. I talk about a bad rap in my opinion, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It was tough for all of us. That, that, that was uh, that was a tough one for a lot of us for sure. His yeah, heart really was in, his heart has always been in the right place. You can never question Bob Huggins' heart or loyalty or where it lies. His loyalty lies to West Virginians and WVU. Yeah. Period the end.
And that's why it's so yeah. hard. It was so hard for us to deal with, to, to, as fans to, to, and especially for Paul and I to talk about that on a show because we love Bob Huggins, man. He, he's one of my favorite people of all time. Uh, but, he gets it. He, yeah. he, and, and he gets it from a ground level about how sports at the beginning of the day is about community involvement and learning to work with each other mm-hmm. and helping us all be better. And then it goes from the buddy league level all the way up through middle school and into high school. And he makes those connections and shakes those hands because he is all about community. And, and he's brought in great people that have been great successes for basketball, for WVU. And then they literally stay around and, and become a part of it. I mean, mm-hmm. tell me that doesn't scream. That, that, that screams somebody that loves West Virginia and wants to yeah. make the state a better place. He does. He truly does. No doubt about it. Well, the head coach that's the head coach now stood by him for 17 years. I mean, how often do you see that anymore? You just don't see that very often. Most people would have gone to greener pastures, but yep. he waited. Uh, you just don't see it. Because he was learning. Yep. Yeah. Huggins was a master man. Yeah. He was great. You know? He was great. Made a couple verbal slip ups. But he makes yeah, mistakes. Yeah, he did. You know? Yeah. I mean, are any of so. us here on this call, are we perfect? I know I'm not. No. No. Not a chance. No, not at all. You know? uh, that's the other thing about being in media is, is that, you know, we're reporting about people, right? These are all human beings. And when your heart's in the right place, don't trip people up over a technicality. Don't don't kill an entire career over one mistake. I mean, come on, guy, we're better than that. None of us are perfect. Agreed. Agreed. So, so what else so, is new, guys? What else is happening in the sports world you want to talk about for a little bit? I got about five more minutes. Oh, okay. Um, I actually want to just thank you, first of all, because you've really given us a great opportunity here. You're our first sponsor. I think you deserve to be thanked. You know, we haven't had a chance to really thank you for that. Um, you know, it, it really, there's a lot of people in the state that you have a lot of brand recognition with what you guys do at Dutch Miller. And, you know, I just reached out to you on a whim one day and you were open-minded and you listened. It means a lot. It really, truly does not to try to get emotional or anything, but um, your story resonated with me. I have a story that's similar. Um, and um, so that was a part of it as well. And so I just wanted let's, to thank you, man. Let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, it's, all, it's always better to be honest and open about things, you know? Yeah. I'm not worried about that. Um, yeah. Our state, we've been ravaged with the opiate epidemic. And addiction has been a really big issue for a long period of time. Yep. Um, you know, we were the uh, epicenter of the opiate epidemic. And everybody got hit by that, man. My family got hit by that. There's not a family. There's not a family in our state that doesn't have, you know, a direct line to someone that is, you know, been lost to the opiate epidemic. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I've been sober from alcohol and opiates since April 1st of 2004. And you know, I made tough decisions, uh, had that personality, go, 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 go. And, you know, one had turned into 32, just the way that it was in my first year of marriage. I had to choose between drugs and alcohol and my wife. And it was hard. Chose the right way. And, you know, I, I get it. I get what a lot of people are struggling with right now because, you know, coming off that stuff's hard. You know, detox, it's real. And we, yeah. we still, we've got an entire generation of kids coming up through the school system that they need help, man, because of what their parents have done. And, we got work to do, gentlemen. We really do. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, totally agree. I know my family's been impacted by it. I mean, I've got, I've got family members who've, who've been impacted by it, and it doesn't just impact the individual who's the addict. It impacts yeah. their entire family, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't think people, I don't, I think people fail to look at that sometimes. Uh, you, you know, those people have parents. They have sometimes children, some spouses, brothers, sisters, and it's a. I mean, it affects the whole family. And, uh, and, 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 and it just builds and builds and builds and becomes a, a like you said, a, a, a real problem for the entire communities across the country. That's exactly right. And what else do you do with a story? Like mine is how I, well, I always phrase it to coups and other people, but share it with other people. You know, I, I was stuck in that thing for 14 years and yeah. it took me. The, it took, a, you know, an incredible amount of consequences. I always talk about the consequences because it is just legitimate. That's what the, that's really what it took for me. There's levels yeah. to it. And, you know, the, I like what the book says. It says people differ in length of recovery and also depth 
of addiction. You know, there's, there's, it goes, there's levels to the addiction too, right? Some people mm -hmm. get worse. Some people are just a little bit better. And mine just happened to be on the extreme end. And I share those stories here on these shows occasionally. It's not all I talk about, but I do use it when I feel led to do so, because I think that, that the testimony, there's people that reach out all the time and say it helps them. And, and I, it gives me purpose, you know, and I'm sure you probably feel the same with your story. Coos tells me things about his family that gives him purpose. He's got certain yep. people that, that he knows that have dealt with this. And um, it's, you know, it's, it's all about the, you know, what did God give me? And it's for a testimony, right? So that's the way I choose to use it. I use myself as an example. You don't have to do what I did. And that's how I look at it. I, I love the fact that you talk about it, man. It matters. People need to hear these stories. And like, God bless you for getting to where you are, man. That, that is a hard thing to do. I don't think people realize how hard it is to be stuck in that rut for that long. And then to go, yeah, there's something better here. There's something bigger here. I need to fix this. And to go through all that work to get yourself back to where you are. I mean, that is, that is hard. hard. That is real hard. work. Yeah. It's real so, work. Dude, yeah. Chin up. It's awesome. It, it is. It's something to be proud of. It's something to wake up every day and go like, I'm doing this. It really is. Appreciate that. Really is. Yeah. Thank both gentlemen, of you. man. It's yeah. Real, yeah. real, real quick before you jet off here, can you let everybody yeah. know where to find you on social media? Yeah. You, you can find me on Chris Miller Gov on Twitter. Also on it's been Facebook and across Instagram. The uh, yeah. It's right down the bottom. Um, so you can find me on Miller for Gov on Facebook or just Chris Miller, my regular Facebook page and also on Instagram. Um, and, you know, fun stuff there all the time. We, we try to communicate and uh, let people know what's really going on in our lives. And you'll see trick or treat Halloween pictures uh, um, amongst everything else. So uh, open book. I am who I am and uh, you know, love people and love the state of West Virginia. Awesome, man. Well, listen, we'll let you out of here. Uh, we appreciate you coming on the show. It, can't thank you enough. Thank you for supporting, you know, for Dutch Miller Automotive supporting us here on the channel, on our channels. And uh, we will let you go. I know you have another meeting to get to, so we really, really thank you, Chris. Game on, guys. Listen, great to, great to talk to you, and we'll uh, catch up more soon. Take care. All right, Chris. See. Thanks. All right.